One Piece chapter 837 was amazing. It was a very good chapter. We should probably start off by talking about the Luffy and Cracker fight. Now, the most important thing about this fight, in my opinion, is that it makes it quite clear that Luffy is not ready to fight Big Mom. Luffy fought one of her commanders, and he needed to go gear 4. That would mean Luffy would need to go, like, a new gear. Maybe he would need to use, like, gear 5 to fight Big Mom. And maybe he has a gear 5, but we don't know. So until he demonstrates or even hints at having a gear 5, I'm going to say he is not ready to fight Big Mom. But the actual fight with Cracker itself, it was amazing. I love how in the beginning, he's like, I don't want to run away. He go gear third, hit Cracker with the elephant gun. Cracker guards it with his shield and covers his shield and armament hockey. I love that thing when he covers the shield and armament hockey. Not a lot of people pick up the, pick up on that. That Cracker did have to use armament hockey on his shield to block it. Which in hindsight, maybe it defeats the purpose of having a shield. If you get a cover of shield and armor hockey, because then why do you need the shield? I don't know. I don't know. Who cares? It kind of seems the purpose of a shield, but armor hockey is the same. It's practically a shield that can appear anywhere on your body. But that is besides the point. Anything involving Luffy versus Cracker was great. The choreography was great. This is a fight that I cannot wait to see in the anime. So I do feel it will be very quick in the anime, but it wasn't a very long fight. This will probably be only like two or three, four or five minutes in the anime, but still, really good content here. Now let's talk about Nami and Brulee's fight. Now, Nami and Brulee's fight isn't really a fight between Nami and Brulee. It's more of a little, like a verbal battle, because what happens is Brulee comes in with this speech. An amazing speech. I'm not going to tell you what the speech is, but you can just read it yourself and it's kind of long. But he pretty much said that multiple pirates like Nami, Chopper, and the others had come there before boasting about how their casting will become the Pirate King. Even though none of them had done it indirectly, it quite cl they know Luffy's goal. And what they're pretty much saying is multiple pirates had come along saying with confidence their pi casting would become the Pirate King. And all they, when they then they see the power of Bunyoko. They see the power of the, of the commanders that are serving under Bunyoko. They fail to defeat them. They they lose and surrender to despair. And then they they never and it all happened. All of this happened without them even catching a glimpse of Big Mom. So yeah, I mean, what Blue Blay is pretty much saying is that Nami and Luffy and the others chanted of catching a glimpse of Big Mom much less getting to Sanji and saving him is barely there at all. They don't really have a chance at all. So, which is very interesting. But, so, Pound the Kundang, by the way, there's, there's a note that, that Nami called Pound to Pound Chan, and so Pound comes in, so he asks Pound to come in, Pound nails the brulee on the head, and so because when she gets the face, she's like pulling Nami into the mirror. Nami jumps back, and then there's a Thunderbolt tempo, and take out Brulee temporarily though. They emphasize that only temporarily the you know, Brulee can go anywhere on Whole Cake Island where there's a mirror. So yeah, the so Brulee is not as dependent on that. Nami and her will probably fight again later. But um, another thing I loved was the dialogue between Pound and Nami, where they pretty much confirm 100% that the V3 card that Nami had does belong to Big Mom, it's Big Mom V3 card. It's Lola's V3 card, it's Big Mom V3 card, however you want to say it. But, it, but it, that V3 card will save them, most likely. If the homie, during when uh, Brulee was giving her speech, wouldn't even go near Nami because of the, because the big V3 card had like, Lola, I guess had Big Mom stolen it. I don't understand that, especially considering I'm looking at it, it appears to stay Lola on it. So I'm very confused that why the these are required protecting them, but maybe I'm crazy. I don't know, I would have to look into that. But yeah, and how these record work, I mean, we'll do a video on the these are card. But whatever, but that was very interesting to me. Now, very interesting that once again it's bringing it brought up that Nami, the homie, cannot attack Nami as long as she has the Vidory card. She kisses the Vidory card and it's like, yeah, the thing gonna save our asses. Like, she knows that Vidory card is gonna save their asses. Now, so we switch over to Luffy and Cracker's fight, where Cracker pretty much tells Luffy 
Why would you ruin Sonny's happiness? He's gonna get married, has a perfect wife. Why would he, and if you were to even like some chance meet up with him, he would just be like, he would just die and be like, why are such lowly pirates here? And Luffy goes into Gear 4, punches Cracker with a King Kong gun, and pretty much tells him not to put words in Sanji's mouth and that he would never speak to them like that. And just, so good. Such a good chapter. There's no break next week. This is probably the longest we've had One Piece without Oda going on a break. Now, I do know that we had a break like a week or two ago from Shonen Jump, but this is the longest we've had One Piece without Oda going on a break in a long time. It's like really cool. I really like that. But, um, yeah. That is all for this chapter. I rated a 10 out of 10. It was perfect. I think this chapter was absolutely perfect. Especially considering that a Cracker and Blue Lay are taking down, we can... Finally, lead the seducing wood. So <laughs> was it great? We're obviously also going to need to see Brulee again because Brulee still has uh, Carrot and Chopper captured. So Nami or or Luffy, maybe Luffy will just take her out quickly and free up. Who knows? Maybe, maybe they won't waste time having Nami fight her. Who knows? But somebody's gonna take Brulee out because Chopper and a uh, Cracker, not Chopper, Chopper and Carrot need to be freed. All these food names are starting to confuse me. We got Cracker, and we got Carrot, and we got Chopper. I'm actually adding this in after I finish recording my review. I cannot believe I forgot to talk about this. But apparently, Kid, Apu, and Capone, and Arouge all tried attacking Big Mom territory during the time gift. All of them failed. Well... Capone, of course, chose to join Big Mom because he saw that being her subordinate would, of course, be the safest thing to do, which is, let's be honest, probably what happened to Drake. Let's be real here. Let's just be real. I mean, I don't see any other reason to Drake to, uh, I don't think Drake seems like the kind of guy to just go and, like, willingly join in Yonko. I feel like he thought she could take on Kaido, like he was like, oh, okay, I'm big stuff, I got, I, I got balls, I'm, I'm big stuff, I can take on this guy. He tried to take on Kaido, and Kaido was just like, no, and it was like, easily, maybe, 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 maybe he fought Jack, and Jack like, decimated him, and he was like, I'll, I'll become your subordinate, I give up. Maybe, Egg and Jack fought, maybe that would happen, but the next time, Pwn joined the crew, a poo, and a kid did not. They thought and they ran, but it's implied that they came at different times, so I would assume what happened was that they both got their asses handed to them and barely escaped with their lives, and then they realized, oh, so we, we team up, maybe we can take down a Yoko. Now, this is the interesting part. Eruge, Mad Monkey Eruge, a man who we are all constantly looking down on took down one of Big Mom Commander. She used to have four, now she's only got three. Wow. Uh, I know I've heard a couple people say Bobbin. Maybe if Bobbin, they were, they were taken down by a Rouge. That's possible, they were Bobbin. I mean, that made perfect sense, right? I mean, we were all expecting to see Bobbin, and now we're not. So maybe, but this whole thing for me is just mind-blowing. A Rouge is the only supernova capable of taking down one of the Division Commander. Well, we're not living in it. Any commander, just one of Big Mom's top commander. I mean, that's ridiculous if you ask me. What does that say about Arouge in power? Uh, is Arouge, like, stronger than Kid and Law now? Does that make like, Arouge as strong as Luffy, if not stronger than Luffy? I mean, we don't know what commander it was, but still, that makes Arouge, who I knew from when I saw a strong supernova, he never hit my, he never even entered my head. I would think a character like S. Drake, Kid, Law, Luffy, Laura. Now I'm thinking of S. Drake, Luffy, Law, Arouge, Kid, and Laura. I'm thinking of those guys now. Like Killer and Hawkins, and Frog Killer, probably not even in my top five anymore. I mean, this is just taking my power scaling and throwing it out the window. I mean, I'm really surprised that I have rough strong this chapter makes a rude to be. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed my review of One Piece chapter 837. Subscribe for more One Piece reviews. I review the chapter every single week it comes out. And remember to like the video if you enjoyed. Tell me your thoughts on the chapter in the comment section down below. 
And above all else, guys, have a great day. This is One Pink Nation signing out.